Okay, here's a simple basic program. Um, the first line is a print statement, and then those characters, what they do, uh, the reverse heart clears the screen and cursor home, and then all the cues are actually cursor downs, and then um, followed by a tab for 14 spaces. So it's gonna clear home, it's gonna go down, however number of cues I have here, I think it's 10, and then it's gonna tab over 14 positions from there. So that, once we do start printing something, it's gonna occur here on the screen. And then uh, line 20, those poke statements are setting the border color and the foreground color both to black. The color code for black on the Commodore 64 is zeros. And then um, line 30 is the start of a loop. We're using um, X equals one to five. So the loop is going to occur five times. And that's because this, what this program is gonna do is print my first name and then a space and then my last name. So I have two different loops, one for my first name, one for my last name. So my first name is five digits long. So that's why the loop is um, for one to five. So X is the variable. And then down here, I'm setting another variable C standing for color. And then the, what this statement says here is it's C is going to be an integer type number, so there's not going to be any decimal points. And then this means that we want that number to be a random number between 1 and 15. And then so C, every time this loop runs, it's going to assign C as a random number between 1 and 15. And those that 1 through 15 is going to be the text color. And that's what this does. This poke 646 is um, putting into memory what color we want the text to be. And in this case, it's going to be the value of C, which will be a random number. So this is going to pick a random number and assign it to C, and then this is going to change the color to whatever number that random number is. And then this read statement is going to read Q as a variable, and the dollar sign means it's going to be text. So what it does here is it jumps down here to this data statement line, and it picks the first piece of data, which in this case is a C. And um, then up here on the next statement, it says print Q dollar. So it's already read the C from the data statement. So now it's going to print the C here because um, QS becomes a C since it's a variable. And then um, this line 45 is a for next loop for time so it's saying t equals 1 to 800 and then next t so what this is going to do is basically start a timer and nothing is going to occur during that time it's just kind of to make a uh, time gap and then this next x is going to restart this x loop up here so once it reads this, it's going to jump up to this part of the program, and it's going to do this all over again, but it's going to change the counter from 1 to 2. So every time this runs and jumps up here, 1 gets added to it. So the first time it's a 1, second time 2, second time 3, second time 4, second time 5. And then all this in between happens again each time it runs. So again, C is going to be assigned as a variable, and it's going to let the computer pick a random number between 1 and 15. Then it's going to change the text color to whatever that number it picked. And then it's going to read the next piece of data. It's already read the C, so it'll automatically go to the next one, the R. Then it's going to print the R in whatever color this random number was generated to. And then it's going to have a timer going to kick off so that there's a little bit of a time gap. And then it repeats a loop. So it does this until it goes all the way through my first name. And then it jumps down here 
and prints a blank space. And that, I was going to say, what this semicolon does is it tells you every time you print that you want to print on the same line after the previously printed character. Otherwise, it'll return down here and start as just print, you know, um, on each um, subsequent line. So that's why you have to put that in there. So after this first loop does it, and it prints my first name all in uh, different color characters, it's going to print a blank space. And then again, the semicolon saying to stay on that same line. And then I'm going to start another loop. So instead of using X, I just used a different uh, variable. So Y is going to be 1 to 5. Uh, computer is going to assign C as a random number, 1 to 15. We're going to poke into the memory location for text color that we want to use, whatever this random number it picks. Then we're going to have the read R, and I used a, um, a different identifier for the read data statement. Instead of using key like I did up here, I just picked R, which you can use whatever you want. And again, the, the dollar sign means it's a string variable type data that we're looking for. So when it comes down here to the data line, when it hits this read spot, it's already gone through all these uh, previously in the program so it automatically knows where to, to pick up again in the data statement because these have already been read into memory so it'll start with the B and then the print R dollar will print that B and then again the semicolon says to stay on the same line and then again I have another timer loop here just so that there's a time gap and then next Y is gonna jump back up here and we're gonna it's going to basically change to 2 to 5. Same thing, pick a random number, poke into memory what text color we want, read the next data element, which would be the E, print the E, time gap, etc., etc. So I'll, I'll go ahead and run it and show you what it looks like.